Hello, all yous worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we, today's video is motivated by a question uh, that has to do with the thickness of antenna elements, particularly on two meters. Uh, he's saying that he sees them fairly spindly, and so he is trying to wonder if it would increase the bandwidth or something uh, if we went with bigger elements, maybe even one or two inches, uh, which would be pretty large for uh, two meters. So let's take a look at that. I put some charts together. We can take a look at those and then we'll discuss them. Stephen KI5 QAD asks this. Howdy, most two meter Yagi antennas have small elements, meaning thin. Wire, tape measure, 3 8 inch aluminum tubing. Would bigger elements be better? One or two uh, inch diameter elements. Well, as it turns out, thicker elements weakly increase antenna bandwidth. What I mean by weakly is that you have to make them substantial substantially larger to get a small increase in bandwidth. Mostly the thickness of an element is determined by the need for mechanical strength. So here's an example of a two meter Yagi. This is a modern Yagi. Uh, the elements are not uh, uniformly spaced. You'll notice how close the director one is to the driver there. Um, the director element is a half inch. Okay, but you'll notice all the other elements are just three sixteenths of an inch. Three sixteenths of an inch, I think I figured out, is about seven millimeters. Half inch is uh, 13 millimeters. Okay, 13.1. Um, and what is interesting here, first of all, notice this is an entirely practical antenna that you can build yourself. Uh, you can use just about anything for the boom which is uh, this line right through here. Um, the elements all have zero voltage right here, so you could actually use a piece of metal for that if you wanted to, and a lot of people do. Or you could use a piece of wood or plastic or something like that, uh, just as long as it's mechanically stable. The driver needs to be the half inch uh, for the thing to work the way it's supposed to. Now, it used to be that uh, Yagis were designed with equal spacing between elements because somehow it just seemed that Mother Nature would want equal spacing. Well, since antenna modeling software uh, came out oh, 20 years ago or so, uh, people have been uh, making all sorts of alternate designs for the various uh, Yagis. The reason for that is to get the, the best um, front to back ratio, the best bandwidth for number of elements and so on. And this is an example of one of those. The modeling software for designing these is described in the Antenna Book 23rd edition. So here's the thing. Remember I said up here that mostly the thickness is determined by a need for mechanical strength. In here we have elements, if you want to go bigger than that, like a quarter inch, uh, I'd go ahead just to make it a little bit stronger for uh, wind and stuff like that. Although this is just a two meter antenna. These are not long uh, lengths. They're about a meter or a yard or just a little bit more than that. Now the thing that's important to look at here is this figure down here. This is figure 15.32 uh, 15 in uh, chapter 15 of the ARRL antenna book, 23rd edition. I'm an edition or two behind, but the physics hasn't changed. Um, note the SWR. Here's one down here. This is what, 1.2 to 1.3 I'd say 1.2 all the way down to it just ticks zero right there and then goes up just a little way. So this has been carefully designed for low SWR and look at that. 
It is low SWR across the entire band. This is an absolutely acceptable SWR. And although this comes from modeling software, you'll find that if you use uh, your 50 ohm antenna, uh, or I'm sorry, 50 ohm transmission line and everything, you'll keep this very, very nice SWR all the way across the band. This is the point. If you go for uh, wider uh, or thicker elements, you're gonna get a very tiny improvement, uh, very tiny improvement, like 0.001 uh, in the SWR, but the problem is, what good's that going to do you? The thing is so good already, there's no point in putting in the heavier stuff, making the antenna heavier, and so on. Okay, so that I think answers the question. Uh, it's right here. Thicker elements only weakly increase the antenna bandwidth. Uh, you can go crazy with one or two inch elements, but they're not going to help you, but they will increase the uh, uh, wind drag on the antenna. Mostly the thickness of an element is determined by the need for mechanical strength. Now we'll resume over here. So the point of this is that you uh, design your antenna to be physically strong for whatever environment you have out there. If you have an environment uh, like parts of Texas where you have frequent ice storms, you might want to make these uh, elements a little thicker and a little more flexible. You can get different kinds of metal that do that. And then the thing will stay up uh, during anything. Um, that antenna would work just fine. Now, here's the thing. If you go all the way down to 40 meters, in 40 meters, a simple wire dipole, like house wire dipole, okay, um, will uh, tune the whole band on 40 meters. So you don't need thicker elements. Um, as it turns out, um, they would do it on six, uh, 60 because 60 is not a very wide band. Now, it won't do it on 80. 80 meters is nigh unto impossible to cover with one passive antenna. It just won't cover the whole thing. People have experimented using essentially Faraday cages um, to give them an equivalent three foot thickness element. It's like four wires with plastic spacers. And even that is a little, a little iffy. It's very difficult to deal with mechanically. Um, probably the best way uh, is to do something like Step IR did with the Step IR Big IR, uh, is that there's a loading coil at the base of a 40 meter antenna, and the amount of loading loads it to 80 meters, but the amount of loading to load it to different parts of the band is different. So there's a switch out there, a relay that will put in more coil or less coil and it's done with relays out there and uh, then you can get coverage across the entire band and that's about the only way you can do it so uh, if you see um, multiband antennas for sale for hf and they say they cover 80 through two okay what they don't tell you, and this is extremely important, is that they'll only cover about 25 kilohertz of a half megahertz wide band. So a lot of people choose the FT8 frequency or they've got a specific net that they're trying to, to choose to, and that's what you're gonna get. And, and, and that's, they don't really give you the complete story that it only covers a tiny part of the 80 meter band. It'll cover all of 40, but only a tiny part of the 80 meter band. 60 meters is usually not included in those antennas. It's very hard to design into an antenna whose fundamental unit is a 40 meter uh, vertical. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, you may do so by going to decastlercom slash support and picking a way that you find most helpful. Please also subscribe and click the bell and click like. Don't forget to comment. Until we next meet, 
73.